So we've got the uh, many factors when it comes to football. Uh, there's, it's a, there's a lot of different demands on the body. We've got the uh, physical component for our legs, so the volume of running. Like Typically, a, a football will cover around 10K of running, and that can vary depending on the position you play and how you play the game. Um, but standard will be around 10K. Then you've got your, your collision base uh, recovery process, so the swelling and hits and bruising that we can get from the contact aspect of the game. You have the uh, agility and high-speed running components, so hamstrings, groins, and the work that we get from that the 360-degree nature of the sport and all the different movement patterns that we hit. So all these combine into player load, and everyone will respond differently um, to a specific game. Okay, going into this week's presentation. So as I mentioned, we've got the recovery process and this 100-point recovery system's a really simple way to break down what's important for footballers and not getting caught up in the um, flashy um, one percenters, let's call them, compared to the big rocks. So when it comes to recovery, the essentials are our sleep and uh, making sure that we're eating sufficient calories and fueling our body. Uh, so they're the most important two. There's no point getting the other stuff unless we're focusing on those two. So typically we'll have some uh, stretching base recovery work. We might have some cold water immersion, like I mentioned, and we want to make sure that we're specifically picking recovery protocols that uh, are going to help out your game and help your body feel better going into the next training session and ultimately into the next game. So by accruing, just like with the primer sessions, knowing what helps you get up for a game and boost your arousal level leading up to a game the day before and like I mentioned um, last week as well, leading up to the game on game day. Some people like to go for a light jog or do some um, high intensity work that morning leading into the game. From a heat point of view, if we've had any swellings or any injuries we want to try and avoid, so rolled ankles, um, or anything that um, has promoted swelling at the joints, we want to try and limit heat because that's going to promote more blood flow and more swelling. Um, where heat can be helpful, is later on, so plus two days from a game or, or potentially um, if you're feeling like your uh, sleep has been compromised leading into a big game and you want to help your body relax, uh, that later on in the week, uh, heat recovery like a sauna or a steam room can be quite beneficial at um, getting you into a more of a relaxed state so you sleep better that night. So that might be for a Saturday game, um, minus two from the game, so on the Thursday. Um, before leading into your main session for the week could be quite beneficial. From here, it would be remiss of me to not mention the mental side. So there's been research done with control groups um, where that had reported in a questionnaire a higher rate of depression and anxiety and stress and their perceived ex uh, muscle soreness and body fatigue was a lot higher compared to those that rated a lower level of depression and anxiety on the pre-exercise questionnaire. So understanding the power of the mind is huge going into the season. If we have a high workload uh, that is causing a lot of anxiety and stress, then that we're, therefore we're gonna feel more fatigued after a game. Whereas if we're, our mind is at ease because we're on top of our work or our academic side, or we're enjoying the game of football, whatever the main stresses are, might be relationship-based, then um, we're potentially not going to feel as fatigued. Our perception of the fatigue is not going to be as sensitive.